हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर पूजा बंसल एंड आई एम होपिंग ऑल ऑफ यू आर फाइन स्टेइंग हेल्दी एंड स्माइलिंग सो ऑन द ट्रेल ऑफ द कॉन्ट्रासेप्शन सीरीज टुडे इन पार्ट टेन वी विल टॉक अबाउट परमानेंट कॉन्ट्रासेप्टिव मेथड्स एंड आर मेन फोकस विल बी ऑन फीमेल स्टरलाइजेशन लाइक ट्यूबलाइजेशन एंड ट्यूबेक्टमी एंड द न्यूएस्ट टेक्निक इज ए श्योर then what uh, 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 what points need to be remember during tubal ligation number 1 is informed consent how to counsel the patient eligibility criteria and then indications and timings and then various approaches uh, like discussion on mini laparotomy and laparoscopic sterilization then how to perform mini laparotomy various type of techniques during the tubal ligation some complications and benefits of tubal ligation so starting with the term permanent contraception as a term itself telling us that if a male or female loses their ability to conceive permanently so i divide this category in further female sterilization as well as male sterilization what do you mean by sterilization it is basically occlusion or blockage of the fallopian tube so that sperm and ova can't meet together which is further divided into surgical and non surgical approaches in surgical tubal ligation is done also called as tubectomy uh, this we will discuss further in non surgical techniques done through trans cervical approaches Uh, further divided into two category mechanical devices and chemicals in mechanical devices most important and newest techniques is assure which is also called as micro coil or micro insert as you can see from this image this is a assure made up of polyester fibers and this technique is office based procedure uh, done Uh, via hysteroscopy under iv sedation or para cervical block so how this assure placement is done so uh, a hysteroscope is inserted through the vagina into the uterus to place the assure in the fallopian tubes and this assure act as a foreign substance cause inflammation and fibrosis around itself and which cause the scar uh, scarring of the tissue and blockage of fallopian tubes as you all know the scarring uh, uh, takes around 3 months so after 3 months of the assure placement a dye test uh, uh, or you can say hysteroselpingography is done to uh, uh, certify that fallopian tubes are blocked and meanwhile couples are advised to use another contraceptive method to avoid the accidental pregnancy so this newest technique that is assure you have to remember by heart then second mechanical device is adiana which is not used and chemicals quinarcine pellets is also not used now because uh, uh, some carcinogenesis is seen with this substances so moving on the tubal ligation which is also called as tubectomy number 1 and the most important it is the most common contraceptive method to be used in india and all over the world so basically tubal ligation is tying or cutting of fallopian tubes to prevent sperm and ova meeting together so it was first done by dj blundel so some points need to be uh, uh, taken care of is number 1 informed consent must be taken of the female herself in her own language and important thing is consent of the partner is not at all mandatory or required but it's better to encourage the partner to come along the patient then number second is counseling before signing the form is done uh, like we have to inform all the available methods and it must be the voluntary decision of the female in her own language and uh, she must uh, be told about the events 
which will happen before during or after surgery and side effects complication and failure of surgery also then counseling about the procedure is done we have to tell the patient that it is a permanent method which is now reversible by a major surgery called as recanalization and third is it doesn't affect the sexual pleasure and day to day activity of the patient and it doesn't protect against the sexually transmitted infection and hiv that is aids and last and most important is on failure of the procedure or unfortunate death of the patient monetary or indemnity coverage is given to the patient and uh, i think it is 20000 rupees in india for now so counseling is done then let's see the eligibility criteria then uh, the female who is eligible for tubal ligation by government of india guidelines number 1 she must be married or ever married means divorced female is also uh, Uh, can also uh, go for tubal ligation second is female age must be above 22 years and less than 49 year of age and for male sterilization age is above 22 to 60 year then couple must have at least one child of age more than 1 year and living then fourth is there must not be any past history of female or partner sterilization then fifth is as i told you informed consent of the female in her own language is required fifth is sound mind of female must be there if she is mentally ill then she needs to be certified by a psychiatrist and the statement of tubal ligation given by spouse or any legal guardian then lastly pre op uh, history about the patient particular like age marital status number of children occupation religion then medical history of any current illness immuni- uh, immunization status then menstrual history of last menstrual period and obstetrical history may uh, interval from the last pregnancy then moving on with the examination vitals and general physical examination is done then per abdomen per speculum and per vaginal examination is done in investigation her hemoglobin must be equal to or more than 7 g per deciliter and urine routine examination is done to exclude any type of infections so these were the eligibility criteria given by the government of india then moving on with the indications like why there is need for tubal ligation number one is if couple feel their family is complete uh, uh, either it, uh, it they have one child or two or three depends upon them second is if medical condition of the female is worsened by pregnancy means if next time she got pregnant then she can endanger her life for example hypertension diabetes mellitus chronic kidney disease or any heart disease third is if she is under uh, going multiple cesarean section because as the number of cesarean section increases there is increased risk of rupture of the uterus and development of accreta so these are the indications then timings and uh, the one one point you need to remember that laparoscopic sterilization is any time preferred over mini laparotomy except in the two conditions that is uh, it is not done postpartum within the 7 days of delivery and sec- uh, concurrent with the second trimester abortion because in this condition uterus is very large in size and if you insert the port it can directly hit the uterus and cause injury so number 1 is our interval sterilization it is uh, done tubal ligation is done day 1 to day 7 of um, uh, menstrual cycle because it is a safe safest or infertile period but if it, if it is done any time in the menstrual cycle uh, make sure the patient is not pregnant by upt or ultrasound and we have to tell the patient that there is increased risk of failure of the procedure because ovulation has already occurred so 
so second is our postpartum period after the delivery done within the seven days of delivery and after six weeks of delivery and third is our post abortal period after abortion done uh, if uh, she had undergone medical termination of pregnancy then uh, ligation can be done along with that and if she has undergone spontaneous abortion uh, ligation can be done asap till 7 days of abortion excluding any infections fourth is it can be done with cesarean section on or any surgery for example ovarian cystectomy <coughs> moving on the uh, to the approaches there are two type of approaches abdominal and vaginal vaginal was done earlier through colpotomy but it is not preferred now and uh, <clears throat> benefits of vaginal ligation are like it is uh, said to be having fast recovery and there is no abdominal scar formation then main is our abdominal approaches which is of further three types number one is conventional laparotomy which was done earlier with the larger incision which is uh, uh, for with four centimeter incision is given in the conventional laparotomy and now it is done along with the other surgery like cesarean section or ovarian cystectomy then mini laparotomy can be uh, done by mbbs which is trained or uh, have training of six months of tubal ligation but laparoscopic ligation must be done by a postgraduate of ms or dgo or any surgeon Mini laparotomy can be done any time, any interval sterilization, postpartum or post abortal period. But laparoscopy uh, can't be done in two conditions, as I have told you earlier: postpartum within the seven days of delivery and second trimester abortion. Because while inserting the port, we can hit the uterus because uterus is of very big size in these conditions. So let's understand the anatomy of the tube. So tubal length is approx 10 cm. It consists of four main, uh, main parts. Number one is interstitial. Number two is our main ideal site of tubal ligation is isthmus which is uh, considered to be located proximal and middle one third or you can say two to three cm from the cornua and it is the narrowest part of the tube. Third is our ampulla which is the widest part of the tube and uh, fertilization also happens here. And fourth is our infundibulum having the fimbrae which is used to collect the ova from the ovary during ovulation. So next question is the relation of fallopian tube to round and ovarian ligament. So, it can be remembered by a mnemonic RFO. So, anteriorly a round ligament is there and after that F is fallopian ligament tube and O is ovarian ligament. So, it can be remembered by a mnemonic RFO. Moving on to the procedure of mean laparotomy, how it is done. Number one is selection of anesthesia. It can be done and it is mostly done in the local anesthesia with the sedatives like pethidine and phenargon. But it can be done under spinal or general anesthesia also and uh, with antibiotic coverage. Position of the patient is in dorsal supine position with empty bladder. Then uh, skin incision is given in the midline uh, either it is vertical or transverse and if, if we are doing the laparotomy it is of 4 cm in size and 2 to 3 cm in the mini laparotomy. So most important is our site where the incision is given. So it uh, depends uh, when the tubal ligation is done. If it is done uh, within the 7 days postpartum post delivery then incision uh, is given 2 finger breadth or you can say 2 cm below the uterine fundus as the uterus is very large in size. And if it is done after the 6 weeks postpartum or post delivery period then 
टू इंसीजन इज गिवन टू फिंगर ब्रेथ और यू कैन से टू सेंटीमीटर अबव द प्यूबिक सिम्फाइज सेम एट द एज द साइट ऑफ सिजेरियन सेक्शन बट स्मॉल इन द साइज सो आफ्टर गिविंग द स्किन इंसीजन वी हैव टू स्ट्रेच द रेक्टस मसल देन मूविंग बिहाइंड एंड बिलो द यू लेटल टू द यूट्रस वी हैव टू हुक द ट्यूब आउट and identify the tube by the fimbre why this identification of the tube is necessary because a similar structure uh, as i have told you round ligament is present anterior to the fallopian tube which, uh, and if misidentification is done then we can ligate the round ligament and it is the most common cause of the failure of tubal ligation so i am telling the procedure uh, uh with a technique of modified pomeroy's technique which is most common technique done nowadays so after identifying the tube tube uh, need to be pull up 2 to 3 cm lateral to the cornua known as isthmus region by the babcocks or ellis forcep to make a 2 cm loop This two centimeter loop base is tied with the chromic cat gut one zero, known as Pomeroy's technique. And if it is uh, tied with the plain cat gut number one, known as modified Pomeroy technique, then one point five centimeter of the loop is cut and sent for histopathological examination. Uh, after that, important thing is. the stumps which are left behind must be inspected after excision to uh, exclude any bleeding and then skin is closed and bandages applied so this was a technique uh, modified pomeroy's then uh, there are with different type of techniques you can remember by the mnemonic pm ka idea sahi upchar it's p to m ka idea sahi upchar P one is Pomeroy's. P two is Parkland method. So P one Pomeroy can be remembered like uh, uh, you have seen uh, the some fabric or some suits or kurtas or dupattas having this pom pom attached to them. So we can remember this by a uh, pom pom is made or you can say loop of the tube is made and uh, removed. That is the Pomeroy's technique. and difference between the pomeroys and modified pomeroy in pomeroys as i told you chromic catgut is used and in modified plain catgut is used which is easily and rapidly uh, dissolvable failure rate of pomeroys uh, is 0.4% and modified pomeroys is 0.2% then p2 is our parkland with the 0.2% failure rate same as modified pomeroys in this park portion of the tube is removed or you can remember this the portion of the park is removed then m is our mad liner with the 1.5% failure rate uh, you can remember this by we are mad about the our crush na so uh, in this loop uh, of the tube is made and it is tied and crushed at the base and ligated with silk in mad liner loop is just crushed nothing is resected then k is our croiner's fimbrectomy with the highest failure rate of 2% in this fimbrectomy itself telling us fimbres are removed so if fimbres are removed it is uh, very difficult or you can say poor reversal uh, technique then modification of croiner's fimbrectomy is there known as eldridge it is k a p m k a m e k a eldridge in this uh, the uh, fimbrial end which is removed uh, is buried into the anterior leaf of the broad ligament then moving uh, on to p m k a idea is i that is irving with the 0.1% lower failure rate it can be remembered as i is inside the myometrium that is 
portion of the tube is uh, resected and the proximal stump is buried inside the myometrium irving means inside the myometrium then uh, sahime shirodkars in this cut ends are turned in the opposite direction and you can remember by this uh, one uh, one end of the s is uh, in this direction and one end is in this direction then uh, upchar is uchida with the point 1% lowest failure rate as of irvings and in this uh, 5 cm of the tube is exposed and tube is uh, ligated proximally and portion is resected but proximal stump is buried in the mesosalpinx so uh, uh one stump is uh, uh, you can remember this by uncha neecha that is one stump is left uh, as it is that is uncha and one stump is buried in the mesosalpinx that is neecha so it is uncha neecha so we will revise this again also and uh, let's discuss some questions like uh, if i ask you with the highest failure rate is off so the answer will be our croiner's uh, fimbrectomy that is 2% failure rate and uh, if i ask you lowest failure rate as i have told you irvings and uchida with 0.1% because maximum portion of the tube is removed in these cases therefore there is poor reversibility because the maximum portion is removed so complications can be divided into operative during operation then post operative and long term complications so during operation there can be risk of anesthesia and uh, there uh, cardio respiratory arrest can occur then uh, doing the uh, operation injury can occur to the surrounding structure like bowel bladder tube ovary then after injury bleeding can be there hematoma formation can be there in broad ligament or mesosalpinx so a uh, post operative complication can be remembered by a mnemonic wif w is wound related to wound it can be wound can be infected wound hematoma can be there wound gap gaping or dehiscence can be there then i3 is infection that is urinary tract infection or pelvic infection i say intestinal obstruction can be there incisional hernia can be there f is fistula of bowel and bladder can be there after injury then long term complication as the tubal ligation decrease the chances of pregnancy but if it is failed and we are uh, operating on the isthmus region or inflammation will be there and it will lead to increase risk of ectopic pregnancy second is post tubal sterilization syndrome uh, uh, in this uh, after the tubal ligation it is seen the female complaining of uh, like altered menstrual uh, habits like dysmenorrhea menorrhagia or intermenstrual spotting third is psychological problem is also seen in the females so what are the benefits of uh, uh, the female undergoing the tubal ligation number one is it protect against the pregnancy as it is a contraceptive method second is it also protect against the pelvic inflammatory disease at as it is uh, decreasing the uh, ascent of the infections the most important is our decreasing the risk of ovarian cancer because it is believed that ovarian cancer origin from the epithelium of the tube so if the tube is removed uh, means opportunistic salpingectomy if we getting the opportunity to remove the tube and patient is willing then it is called as opportunistic salpingectomy it is done so it will decrease the risk of ovarian cancer lastly is certificate when certificate is given one month after the sterilization or after the next menstrual cycle so guys this was my video on tubal ligation and the most important part of this video is to make this planet healthy and to contribute to this planet 
सो टुडे आई विल रिक्वेस्ट यू ऑल दैट वी हैव टू स्टॉप द यूज ऑफ बलून्स एंड वी हैव टू लर्न वाई एंड से नो टू बलून्स वाई बिकॉज बलून्स आर सिंगल यूज प्लास्टिक कैन लैंड अप इन ओशन एंड एनिमल्स कैन ईट दैम विथ सो दे कैन किल एनिमल्स दे कैन स्ट्रैंगल एनिमल्स एंड प्लीज हीलियम द गैस विच इज़ यूज टू फिल द बलून इज़ अ लिमिटेड रिसोर्स विच इज़ यूज फॉर द मेडिकल पर्पसेज सो आई एम नॉट सेंग यू हैव टू स्टॉप द सेलिब्रेशन लाइक ऑल्टरनेटिव आर देयर यू कैन यूज द फ्लोट्स फ्लावर्स और प्लांट अ ट्री और ब्लो अ बबल और लाइट कैंडल्स सो प्लीज इट इज इट्स अ रिक्वेस्ट टू स्टॉप द यूजेज ऑफ बलून so let's revise uh, the topic we have discussed today and uh, hope you like my videos please do subscribe and recommend these videos so permanent contraception female sterilization occlusion of fallopian tube sperm and ova can't meet together divided in surgical tubal ligation or tubectomy and non surgical uh, through trans cervical approach most important mechanical device is our assure also called as micro coil or micro insert which is a office based hysteroscopy guided done under iv sedation and para cervical block and um, uh, after the placement of the assure 3 3 uh, months after that hsg is done and another contraceptive is used till 3 months then is our tubal ligation known as tubectomy which is the most common contraceptive method to be used first done by dj blundell an informed consent of the female herself is mandatory but consent of the partner is not mandatory at all counseling of the patient is done before signing the form and about the procedure it is a like it is a permanent method and it is a reversible but by major surgery and it doesn't affect the sexual activity and day to day uh, activity and not protect against the sti and hiv then eligibility criteria females must be married or ever married age of female 22 to 49 having at least one child of more than 1 year and living the no past history of female or partner sterilization informed consent of uh, female and sound mind of female must be there indications may family complete honi chahiye medical conditions uh, of the female is worsened by pregnancy or patient is undergoing multiple cs then timings may interval sterilization day 1 to day 7 of menses postpartum within the 7 days or after 6 weeks of delivery post abortion uh concurrent with the medical termination of pregnancy and uh, uh, asap till 7 days in case of spontaneous abortion then uh, mini laparotomy uh, is done by mbbs with the training of tubal ligation any time with 2 to 3 cm of incision laparoscopic tubal ligation by ms tgo or surgeon not done in second trimester abortion and within the 7 days of postpartum delivery then uh, ideal site for tubal ligation is isthmus which is 3 to 3 cm from the cornua or you can say proximal and middle one third of the tube which is the narrowest part of the tube and if we see the relations anterior to posterior it is rfo that is round ligament fallopian tube and ovarian ligament So mini laparotomy is done under LA with sedatives in dorsal supine position uh, with vertical or transverse incision with two to three centimeter in size and site depending upon the uh, when the uh, ligation is done. If it is done within the seven days postpartum, then two finger breadth or two centimeter below uterine fundus. And if it is done after six weeks postpartum, then two finger breadth or two centimeter above the pubic symphysis. so uh, after stretching the muscle identifying the tube uh, so that uh, uh, we uh, we doesn't ligate the round ligament which cause the failure of ligation then modified pomeroy technique is performed uh, in this tube is pulled 2 to 3 cm from the cornua by babcox or ellis 
टू सेंटीमीटर ऑफ बेस इज टाइड विद द प्लेन कैट गेट नंबर वन एंड वन पॉइंट फाइव सेंटीमीटर लूप इज रिमूव सेंट फॉर एच पी ई देन टाइप्स ऑफ टेक्निक्स कैन बी रिमेंबर्ड बाय निमोनिक पी एम का आइडिया सही उपचार पी वन इज पॉमरॉयज इन विच लूप ऑफ ट्यूब इज रिमूव पॉम पॉम पी टू इज पार्कलैंड पोर्शन ऑफ द ट्यूब इज रिमूव पोर्शन ऑफ पार्क इज रिमूव M is mad leaner that is mad about the crush the base of the loop is crushed only then K is Croner's fimbriectomy uh, fimbrae fimbrae are removed A is Eldridge this is modification of Croner's in which fimbrae are buried in anterior leaf of broad ligament then I is our Irving's that is inside the portion of the tube is removed and proximal stump is buried inside the myometrium. S is Schrodinger's. U is Uchida. That is Uncha Nicha. Portion of the tube is removed and proximal stump is buried into mesosalpings. So, highest failure rate is of Croner's fimbriectomy. That is two percent and lowest is Irving's and Uchida because maximum portion of tube is removed, and that's why it is uh, the reason for the poor reversal also. then there are complications post operative can be remembered by mnemonic wif wound infection hematoma dissens i say i1 is infection intestinal obstruction incisional hernia f is fistula then long term may ectopic pregnancy and post tubular sterilization syndrome uh, altered menstrual cycle and psychological problem can be there benefits may protect against pregnancy and pid and decrease chances of ovarian cancer and certificate is given one month after the sterilization or after the next menstrual cycle so guys thank you so much for listening me please subscribe and recommend these videos thank you so much